Just a quick little video update, not a whole lot going on today. Obviously, I get up a little bit early. I uh, got the Northfield race last night. Races went okay. Obviously, the only downside of the entire day, I think, for the most part, was uh, the two horses that were first over, right? Walk on the Moon and Procrastinator. Everybody else had a great day uh, at the stable. I heard from James Day, just got off the phone with him. He told me that Twinby Habanero schooled in 201 and felt good. I would say he's still two, three weeks away from racing, but at least we're back to kind of where we were before he had he had uh, injured his foot. Next, we have uh, Sir Strong. Said he was very strong in the face. He gets that way. I think after we get about th three or four starts into Strong, he's going to start coming back. I think he's getting a little antsy, right? Because his training over the last month has been rather monotonous, right? Wednesday, Saturday, same speed, give a little more. But, you know, it's it's not like he's a kid watching the other kids play in the playground, but at the same time, he's there. And he, you know, I think he wants to get at it too. So uh, we will qualify Sir Strong. Let's say today is Tuesday. He will train again Saturday. We'll qualify him next Tuesday if they have a two-year-old qualifier or the following Friday, one or the other. But he's there, probably ready. James said he went 2 4 last half, 59 to bed. Probably ready for mile in 2 1. James, factor in James, 2 2 and a piece. But he'll be, that's where he's ready to go. Um, he said that the other Philly is getting much better. That would be um, um, uh, Tactical Mounds. He said she's getting much, much better. He was happy with her, and he said that. Uh, the big boy Locatelli qualified very well also. So a good day there. Here, I had to get up at 7 o'clock, had to be on the road by quarter to 8. I got to, uh, I got to the Meadows. I trained Carter Michael Dio. Still, so he scoped him after. Still some mucus and redness in there. He's better. He's better. But still some in there. Uh, he trained very, very good. I was really happy. In fact, you know, it was so weird. You guys know that on the periphery of, of some of these horses, I've talked to Ron Burke and said, hey, if these horses go Grand Circuit, Carter Michael Dio was on the top of that list of horses that he would get. Now, I didn't know Ronnie was even in Pennsylvania, certainly not the Meadows today, and he's standing, he's sitting inside the kitchen. So, you know, I take Carter Michael Dio, I come down with, the, come down with Father Dunn to qualify, we'll talk about him in a minute, and I, uh, I see Ronnie, he goes, hey, uh, who, who's that horse you were training earlier? Now, this is how sharp Ron Burke is. Ron Burke has 10 trillion horses. He makes us look like a, a boutique stable. You know, he's got all these horses all over the world, yet out of the corner of his eye, I wasn't training with anyone. There was no reason for him to watch what I was doing other than he was curious. He stopped and watched the horse train. He didn't know it was Carter Michael Dio. He didn't know who it was. He came up and he said, who, who's that horse you trained earlier? He said, that's one of those colts I was talking about. He said, that's a good horse. I said, I know he's a good horse. He said, he's just going through some sickness and trying to mitigate some stuff and he shouldn't have run the other day. I said, I stuffed him in the Stallion Series in Philadelphia because I think we have bigger fish to fry with this horse than the Stallion Series in Pennsylvania. And he said, or I said, the, the Sire Stakes in Pennsylvania. He goes, yeah, I like him. I said, well, we'll see how he races and scopes in Philadelphia. Uh, and there's a potential that if you have room, he said, oh, I have room for him. He said, there's a potential that, uh, that you know, you could just take him from Philadelphia. He said, all right, good. We just shot the shit about some horses. And, you know, he said the same thing I do. He goes, you know, this is a tough time of year for me, for probably you, for everyone, especially all your owners, because now they are what they are, right? The ones that you wanted to be good may or may not be. The ones that you, you know, thought were going to be great may not. And he said, the ones that maybe you thought were no good. Or, and he, I said, that's exactly what I, I tell our clients all the time. I said, perfect example is the Philly. I was going to send you a horn player. You know, I've been waiting and waiting for him to this breakout race. You know, and I, although I, I wasn't disappointed per se in her race the other day, I I expected more. I said, so really it come down to this. I said, when I texted you the other day, it really came down to, I didn't want to race her in the straight numbers to at the Meadows. I didn't know, and I didn't have enough information to send her to the Meadowlands with you. I said, the last thing I want to do is send a horse away on hope. He said, yeah, it's a good way to get in trouble. Uh, I said, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do was, uh, did I just miss my turn? I did. Yes. Um, I said, what I wanted to do was send her away, but I couldn't do that on hope. So... 
I'd send her back to Mohawk, and he goes, it's probably a good idea. He said, because, you know, you get down there in New Jersey, with the, and he said it becomes a buzzsaw, right? You get in there with these horses, and they're so good. And he said, maybe they're not good in two months. He said, maybe they're just good right now. He said, but you get down there with a filly that you're trying to develop. And he said, they just get chewed up right away. He said, some of them take it. They just get come back a better horse, and some of them don't. And he said, you know, obviously, if you thought that, that she wasn't ready to go to New Jersey, then she should be Mohawk. He said, well, my take's pretty simple. So we, if she's as good as I think, it will show up. She'll miss the kindergarten. She'll miss the Doherty. But she's there for the peaceful way. And he said, exactly. So um, as it stands right now, at least I was surprised, but Carter Michael Dio is now on Ron Burke's radar. Um, Horn player, I'm watching very closely to see what's going to take place with her, a girl. All I had to do was hit this. So the problem was with my maps is that I, I go back and forth so much I know how to get there now. But that last little little turn before the turnpike, uh, 13 minutes away, what do I care? I lost five minutes. Um, that last little turn before the turnpike, there's a bunch of... Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so Carter Michael Dio uh, may in fact join the Ron Burke stable after Philadelphia. This time of year with all the heat, I'm always worried that you're going to see a little bit of blood in their throat and that it always concerns me. It, it bothered me when I saw it with Three Point Blue Chip who ended up on Lasix and if you guys, I've been kind of quiet about it, but we put Enzo Aguello on Lasix, second lifetime start, which I didn't want to do. It's taboo with a lot of horse people. It isn't with me, but at the same token, I took all the information that I had presently and past from Enzo, looked at what was going on, and realized that maybe what I was what I was thinking was one problem causing another was actually two very distinct problems, and I was only treating one of them. So we opted to put him on Lasex, and I think you're going to see a much, much better Enzo Aguello in Philadelphia because of it. And you know, for those that, for the people out there that think that. Anyway, I don't want to get into that Lasex argument. Every so often I rant about it. I don't want to do that. So, uh, Carter Michael Dio trained well. Um, uh, and then we had Father Dunn. The real reason I went there was to train Carter Michael Dio, but I did want to get Father Dunn qualified. We had made some shoeing changes. I told you guys the other day it was my first look at Father Dunn. Now, you guys probably couldn't see the qualifier the other day, and maybe you couldn't see the qualifier today, but the changes we made on him were immense for the horse himself. Added some, a couple of head poles on the left, put a Murphy blind, a bit burr on the left. He was running in very bad. Um, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff, but they it all go, every little bit counts with a horse like him. And he was a different horse today. 59, last quarter 29, last half 57 a piece. but decent horses finishing up in front of him. And I couldn't really put him in play because, you know, there's always that voice, he felt safe, but there's always that voice saying, Anthony makes a break you got to come back to the qualifiers next week so um i just got him around but make no mistake he was infinitely better than he was the other day very very happy with what i saw from father dunn and quite frankly i told everybody you know tim says well, what, what do you want to do with him i said race him in the bottom class and then we'll find a claimer for him or we'll find the next class for him He's going to tell us what's what's what here soon enough. And I think he's a decent horse. He's going to fit in okay. Not what I bought him to be, obviously, but when you're paying $10,000 for a horse on Ongate in a day and age when the Amish would give you fifteen for that exact same horse, you know, he's a big, good-looking horse. I, I just think that it's a no-brainer. So we'll race him next week or maybe race him a few times and we'll decide if he's doing well for us, great. If he's kind of floundering and flopping around in 57 and isn't really going to be that handy, then we can move him easily. So that's where we're at with Father Dunn. I was very happy for the most of the day. I had a lot of emails and questions come in. You know, this is the time of year. i got to try and cut people some slack, but this is the time of year when some horses start racing really good and other people, it's not them being resentful. But I think they're a little frustrated because their horses aren't racing as good as they are. And this is the time of year that Ron Burke and I were talking about. The time of year when they just are. This is what they are. And whether I like it, or you like it, or anybody else likes it or otherwise, this is what they are. And, you know, for, for, the, for a group like the Austral Hanover group, that is flabbergasted with how good this horse is, or the tailgate buzz group that's so happy because he looks so ordinary and pedestrian in his first start and now just looks 
Bionic, he looks great. You know, for Crantini and Spitfire Overseas and Swinging Senorita, all those groups, everybody's happy. But for every one of those, there's lots that aren't. Right? There's just there's lots that aren't, and I get that. And I try to cut everybody some slack because everybody's in the same boat. Although we are one major group that is named the Stable.ca, not all of us own Swinging Senorita. Not all of us own Crantini, and I get that. So. I try to cut everybody some slack. And I hope, I, you know, I catch myself once in a while sending a snarky email back to everybody. Maybe I took it the wrong way. And then, lo and behold, more times than not, what you come to find out is that I read into it wrong, you read into it wrong, and rather than just talk to you on the phone, now we have a, a thread that isn't very productive for, for, any, for anybody. So, so, and many of you out there know you've engaged me in, in such conversations. So, although I'm always here and I'm always available, I do have feelings too. So, um, for those of you out there that, that maybe are feeling a little left behind, a little frustrated, a little left out, I do apologize. Uh, I, I get that feeling sometimes too. And uh, I know where you're coming from. So, I do hope you understand that this is an extremely hectic and, and uh, challenging time of year for me also. Um, and although I'm very, very happy and lucky to have all our clients, it's not always roses, rainbows, and sunshine. You guys know that. It's a tough game sometimes. And the toughest part of my job, to be quite frank, now that I say it out loud, is going through it all with you. Going through the happiness with one group and simultaneously going through the sadness with another group. And it, it's, it is the most, the, the, the most difficult part of what I do is, is trying to balance you know, put on my hat, put on all these different hats that I have, and then talk to everybody that are all coming from different points of view and trying to understand your point of view. Because there is somebody that may make a point that I didn't think of. So for those of you out there that are feeling a little frustrated, I get it. We all get frustrated from time to time. But you know what? Um, just because you're having a bad day today, especially at the stable, especially in horse racing, doesn't mean you're going to have a bad day tomorrow. So... Um, chin up. You know, it's it's been a good run for a lot of us, but at the same token, for those of you that maybe are treading water and floundering a bit and your horses aren't racing as good as you want, you know what, we'll do our best to find them a spot where they can do a little better for all of us. So with that, uh, I hope you guys are having a good day. You know what, I, I, I feel weird. I don't have anything to do for the rest of the day. I'm going to sit home and try and have a nap and... Uh, try and get my bearings you know tomorrow we got to get up I got to get up and train some horses brace for landing and uh, a more deaner we got to train those horses tomorrow maybe a couple other ones then I got to get in the car and go to Busiris when I'm done at Busiris and it doesn't you know it doesn't look super optimistic for Busiris outside posts on a half mile farm track man that's a that's a tough one that's if they're six wide I don't even know it's worse if Columbus is the trailer that might even be worse than the six hole outside so it's going to be a long day tomorrow with Cyrus, and it's a four-hour drive to the Buffalo Airport to get to Philadelphia. So a long week ahead for me for the next few days, but at the same token, today is not. Today I'm all done. So I'm going to sit home just like you, try and get a little nap maybe this afternoon, and watch tonight's races. Good luck to everybody racing today and for the rest of the week. I'll talk to you all very soon.